welcome to atcm the emergency medicine channel today let us discuss about acute liver failure in adults i am not talking about in children or in pregnancy it is mainly liver failure in adults we will see the reasons how do we manage in emergency room what are the definitions all these things this is characterized by acute liver injury hepatic encephalopathy and elevated prothrombin time or inr so three things you have to be very uh, uh, like you have to watch here in this slide acute liver injury it can it can be diagnosed by elevated ptnr sorry elevated sgot sgpt then hepatic encephalopathy because of the liver injury the liver is unable to uh, detoxify the contents in the stomach so the toxins directly go to the brain that produces encephalopathy and because the liver is not functioning that uh, uh, bleeding tendency can occur that produces elevated pt and inr the time for this definition is uh, uh, if the liver injury and hepatic encephalopathy develops less than 26 weeks we can make a diagnosis of acute liver injury again uh, this is subclassified to hyperacute less than 7 days acute 7 to 21 days or subacute more than 21 days and less than 26 weeks whatever it is if the patient develops liver failure with hepatic encephalopathy in less than 26 weeks we have to make a diagnosis of acute liver failure so once the liver is failed you can you know that it will produce hepatic encephalopathy that leads to cerebral edema so that is a reason for altered behavior here Toxins enter to the brain and produces inflammation in the brain, produces hepatic encephalopathy. It was previously known as fulminant hepatic failure, acute hepatic necrosis, fulminant hepatic necrosis, fulminant hepatitis. These are the different names given for this in the previously. Previously, if we see the causes for this acute liver failure, one of the most important causes in our country, even in foreign countries, it is paracetamol poison so there is a major reasons for that and uh, we know that in our country there are other reasons also can produce uh, 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 liver failure uh, we'll see what are the other reasons drug reactions many drug reactions can produce liver failure viral hepatitis like hepatitis b c e a in that b is very common he can produce hepatic hepatic failure in pregnancy. A normally it will not produce hepatic uh, failure. C also will not produce. So the most important cause is B. Alcohol, binge alcoholism can sometimes present with acute hepatitis with hepatic failure. Autoimmune diseases like especially SLE is one of the important cause for uh, all these things. And autoimmune hepatitis itself uh, is a separate entity other than other autoimmune diseases. Wilson disease, there is another important reason for hepatic failure. Ischemic uh, failure like patient who is having cardiac arrest. So prolonged cardiac arrest, less blood supply to the liver can produce ischemic hepatic failure. But Chiari syndrome, venous occlusive disorder, acute fatty liver of pregnancy, malignant infiltration, toxin exposure. So toxin exposure can be like mushroom toxicity or sometimes rat poison that is the most important uh, poison in our country which produces liver failure uh, and many patients may go to liver transplantation they end up in liver transplantation sepsis is another important condition hlh hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis disorder or children that's a primary disorder so hlh or macrophage activation syndrome also can produce liver disease so remember two important things paracetamol and rat poison these are the two important things which is very very common in our country other reasons also you can see in many of our patients now we can see uh, when there is liver failure like any other disease fatigue lethargy anorexia nausea vomiting right hypochondria pain pruritus that is due to elevated direct bilirubin jaundice initially there will not be jaundice 
but later the patient develops severe jaundice, abdomen distension due to ascites. So that also occur after some days. Now hepatic encephalopathy is a problem because uh, in chronic liver disease it's itself it's a problem, but in acute failure, all the uh, food in our stomach they produce some amount of toxins. Toxins are produced normally. All these toxins are detoxified in our liver. Then it will enter to the blood. Okay. But here the liver is damaged. So, liver is damaged. So, toxins are anyway produced in our stomach. Toxins are produced that go to the liver. Liver is not working. So, it will bypass the liver and go to the systemic circulation. From there it will go to the brain. So, when brain receives this type of toxin which are not detoxified by the liver, brain develops encephalopathy. That is called as hepatic encephalopathy. Okay. So, for hepatic encephalopathy there are different grades. If you see the grade, you will easily understand this. It is a very complicated system, but if you can remember few words, you can understand this. Grade 1, grade 2, grade 3, grade 4. Now, look at this slide. Which are the most important things in this slide that you have seen? Sleep reversal. Grade 1 means sleep reversal. Patient will be sleeping in the daytime, night time. He do not get sleep and will be agitated, shouting in your ICU. So, there is a first grade of hepatic encephalopathy. Second grade is he develops moderate confusion. So, remember moderate confusion. Third grade, he go to severe confusion, suppress, incoherent sleep, all these things, but he develops flapping tremors. So, flapping tremors, hepatic flaps, that is due to his uh, hepatic encephalopathy. You ask the patient to do like this, his hands. So, you can see the hand will be moving like this. That is flapping tremor. So, grade 3 onwards, he develops flapping tremors. Grade 4 is coma. So, this Four things you remember, grade 1, sleep reversal, grade 2, moderate confusion, grade 3, patient develops flaps, grade 4 is coma. So, it will be easy for you to grade this encephalopathy. Now, laboratory test, very important thing is PT INR, prothrombin time will be elevated because PT is elevated because all these coagulation proteins are produced in liver. If the liver is not working, coagulation proteins are not produced, then prothrombin time will be increased, INR will be elevated. Normally INR, if you see your lab, it is 1 point, 1 is to 1, 1 is to 1. Here it will become 1 is to 1.5. That means patient's bleeding tendency is increased by from a standard solution. So INR is elevated, that is the most important. SGOT, SGPT will be elevated. SGOT, PT will be elevated. That will be elevated in thousands. Normally it is somewhere around 40 international unit. Now it is elevated more than thousands. Maybe 10,000, 20,000, 40,000 like that. So that is very, very important. Elevated bilirubin level. Normally bilirubin may be 1.2, from there it will elevate to 16, 17, 18, like that. So, it will be highly elevated. Platelets are, in many patients who is saying liver disease, platelets are elevated. But this is also a, not an acute change, but conditions like viral hepatitis and all, this will be an acute change. Now, other investigation, we have to see the viral markers, like HBSAG, hepatitis C, anti HCV, HEV, HAV, like that, you have to check it. Now, toxicology screen, we have already discussed. Paracetamol is one important thing, then rat poison. So, other thing, any drug can produce uh, liver disease, but common drugs are paracetamol and rat poison. So, paracetamol level should be checked. Wilson screen like uh, eye checkup. So, 
kefrin and copper level all things what i mean hepatitis you have to see immune mediated antibodies and sle also should be ruled out in a young lady other lab findings associated with chronic liver, acute liver disease it can be hemolytic anemia creatin can be elevated amylase lipase can be elevated hypoglycemia in many patients with acute liver injury you can see uh, glucose will be very low hypophosphatemia hypomagnesemia hypokalemia acidosis or alkalosis depend on, on the other uh, other uh, parameters of patient ammonia may be elevated remember ammonia is elevated in liver disease but this elevation never correlate with the severity of the disease so severe you cannot tell that uh, suppose ammonia level is uh, 100 this 100 so you give severity like this okay suppose it is 200 you cannot put the severity like this because the severity doesn't uh, uh, correlate with the ammonia level but ammonia is elevated in hepatic and liver that is true but the severity does not correlate with the levels of ammonia ldh will be elevated in many patients kidney injury creatinine will be elevated now wilson disease uh, we have to rule out wilson disease patient like hemolytic anemia holmes test will be negative neurological symptoms can be there ophthalmologic examination kefrin can be there stot stot pt ratio should be more than 2 Uh, alkaline phosphatase level will be uh, maybe slightly elevated or uh, reduced uh, but mostly it is normal now leo biopsy is not indicated in all types of acute liver injury here it is only indicated in mainly conditions like malignancy autoimmune hepatitis wilson disease these are the three important conditions where you do for liver biopsy so acute liver failure is diagnosed by elevated stot stpt and in thousands that is very important more than 1000 like 10000 20000 alkaline phosphatase may, may be elevated hepatic encephalopathy will be there altered sleep rhythm confusion flapping tremors coma that is a grade and inr level will be more than 1.5 that is very important now we are not going to the lft abnormalities in all these conditions but acute hepatitis means bilirubin is elevated both direct indirect elevated liver enzymes are in thousands that is very important uh, alkaline phosphatase is elevated more than 3 times albumin mostly it is normal but after some times it will drop so albumin half life is 21 days so some more days albumin will be no, normal but in severe sepsis and all it drops very fast pt is elevated so that is very important now treatment of acute hepatitis we can only give a supportive therapy in liver disease we have to prevent hepatic encephalopathy n acetyl cysteine is a very important drug in acute liver failure this is basically a drug used in paracetamol poisoning there the dose is 50 150 mg per kg per hour one hour followed by 1.25 mg per kg per hour for four hours then it is it should be given as a continuous infusion 6.25 mg per kg per hour for remaining 67 hours this is the dose of n acetyl cysteine in paracetamol poisoning we can give either same dose or you can give 500 mg to 1000 mg tid dose whichever way you give uh, n acetyl cysteine that may, may work because paracetamol definitely works but nowadays in many other acute liver failure also we can give this liver protective agent now prothrombin time when it is elevated it can only be treated by fresh frozen plasma the problem with fresh frozen plasma is so we can give fresh frozen plasma in 15 ml per kg so that we can prevent bleeding tendency but 
one of the most important indicator for liver transplant is elevating an increase in the PTINR. But that is a there is an indicator for transplant. But if you are giving continuously FFP, so that you get a false uh, data that PTINR is elevated. But actually, patient is deteriorating; his liver is deteriorating only because you are giving FFP. The PTNR is kept in a higher range. So, we have to be very careful. We can avoid bleeding by giving FFP in this patient who requires a liver transplant, but only problem is that may be masking your clinical judgment. That is only problem with FFP, otherwise FFP is a very uh, good therapy to control bleeding in acute liver failure. Lactose is a drug, it is a non-absorbable laxative, osmotic la laxative. It can even be given in diabetic patients because it is not absorbed from the bowel. It removes uh, stool from the stomach and it reduces the pH in the intestine, reduces the growth of ammonia producing bacteria in the intestine. Dose is 30 to 60 ml every hour. Patient should develop good stools and patient should have diarrhea occurs uh, uh, at least two to four stools per day. Rifaximin is another drug that is a non-absorbable antibiotic. It is used as a gut sterilizer. So, for gut sterilization, we give rifaximin 400 milligram orally three times or 550 milligram twice daily. If the patient is having SBP, spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, you go for septreaction. That is a third generation cephalosporin. 2 gram OD can be given. Other drugs which may be helpful in acute liver disease and that is LOLA, L ornithin L aspartate. That is a liver protective agent that can be tried along with other drugs. Branched chain amino acids also can be given, but all these things are add on drugs. You have to prevent hepatic encephalopathy by Important measures like there should not be any bleed in the stomach, potassium should be corrected, patient should have good uh, uh, stool output that is good di uh, diarrhea by uh, lactulose, rifaximin, avoid sedatives. These are the major five factors which can prevent hepatic encephalopathy in this type of patients. All others are supportive medication including NSL system. Flumacinil can be tried in hepatic and cephalopathy. Dose is 0.2 milligram IV over 15 seconds, then 0.2 milligram every minute as needed up to 1 milligram total. Now, many of these patients will be highly agitated in your ICU or emergency room. You can go for short acting opioids like uh, uh, fentanyl. We uh, Try to avoid benzodiazepines because uh, benzodiazepines because they are long-acting drugs. These patients will go to a long sleep. That is not good in a patient who is having suspected hepatic encephalopathy. So we try to avoid that. And fentanyl can be used in patients who is having cirrhosis or acute liver injury for sedation. Propofol is preferred over other uh, drugs like uh, benzodiazepines. Tramadol also can be used for pain. Then uh, other things like uh, if the patient develops seizures, that is very important. We will not be able to use phenotoin for phenobarbital. Levetiracetam is a very good choice. Now something called as King's College criteria that should be used in uh, patients with uh, uh, acute liver injury, especially due to paracetamol. We can see the pH less than. 7.3, lactate more than 3 uh, and other uh, criteria like hepatic encephalopathy more than grade 3, serum creatinine more than 3, INR 1.5. So, this is a uh, foreign literature. So, the values are slightly different. We have to convert to our uh, uh, Indian uh, uh, scenario. So, INR uh, 6.5, sorry, INR 6.5, serum creatinine 3 is the uh, guideline. So, we have discussed about acute liver failure, 
Acute liver injury is different from liver failure. Liver injury is elevation of SPOT STPT. Liver failure means because of the uh, liver injury, the toxins which enters from our stomach will go directly to the brain, bypassing the damaged liver, produces hepatic encephalopathy. And since the liver is failed, the coagulation parameters are abnormal and INR will be more than 1.5. The treatment is mainly supportive and you, you have to prevent hepatic encephalopathy. And according to King's College criteria, you can select the patient for liver transplantation. Only thing you have to be very careful is, without knowing this value of INR, value means uh, it is very valuable investigation in this liver failure. So, knowing that the importance of the INR, if you give FFP continuously, the INR will be falsely elevated. Falsely means the liver is not actually working because we are giving FFP, it is getting corrected. The liver injury is increasing. So, that sometimes produces a problem in a patient who requires liver transplantation. But however, many centers where the uh, liver transplantation is not possible, to prevent bleeding, we have to give FFP and many patients recover without liver failure even when we see that King's College criteria for transplantation and all. Sometimes even when the patient is fit for transplant, even if you do not transplant, some patients come back to normal life. So, it will be very difficult to predict uh, liver transplantation uh, like whichever patient, which patient go to liver transplantation. That will be very difficult in a normal settings. You need experts guidance for all these things. Thank you.